Hi. I'm. And I'm. And we're two kids on a couch. A musical snub this year that surprised kind of unfortunately no one is Andrew Lloyd Webber's Bad Cinderella. This show had a mediocre to not great reception in London, and so they decided to immediately bring it to Broadway, changing almost nothing except for the name, which was formerly Cinderella, to, and I wish I was making this up, Bad Cinderella. The show is fine. It didn't get any nominations, which is, I think, pretty deserved. The story is not compelling. I wasn't impressed by really any of the performances. The entire show felt like it was searching for a reason to exist at every corner, and it just never found one. That's bad Cinderella. It was on Broadway. It extended Andrew Lloyd Webber's streak of having a show on Broadway that's been going on for like 40 something years. And that's, I think, most of the purpose that it served. Bad Cinderella. 1776 opened on Broadway in 1969 with book by Peter Stone, music and lyrics by Sherman Edwards. It was revived this past year by director Diane Paulus and kind of made the news by its inclusive cast. The entire cast is non-male identifying folks, lots of femme, uh, non-binary and trans people, uh, mostly with diverse uh, body types, racial identities, all sorts of stuff. It was kind of Hamilton 2.0 and everybody had an opinion on it. I'll be honest, of all the shows this year, this is one of the ones that I kind of most want to see or to have seen. When it was announced, I was thrilled with the idea. I talk all the time about how the purpose of revivals is to do something new, do something different, layer today's sensibility on yesterday's words, and this revival did all of those things. In concept, beautiful, amazing idea. Also, I don't like 1776. I don't know, I've seen the movie, I've listened to the soundtrack a little bit, and I've been like a little bit bored by it, but I know it's a classic, I know it's supposed to be good, and sometimes all it needs is like a good revival to like get me into these kind of things. That was the case with Pippin, that's been the case with a number of shows that like I want to like, but I can't until they give me a new revival to help me understand it. And then the show came out, and, and I kept watching videos and being kind of bored, just like, just like kind of not getting it. To be fair, every review I've read has basically said that the concept, the idea, was super neat. Where the reviews start to diverge is in the execution, mostly asking the question of, were these hot takes that they had inspired, or was it a little bit too much? The show felt the need to comment quite often on the juxtaposition of the people we're seeing and the words they're saying. Many people, kind of myself include, included, think of it as an old white man show, and like, it is. But it was also like written in the late 60s, early 70s, so it wasn't quite as prehistoric as the actual founding fathers were. It said some progressive things for its time, and maybe to call those words that show, that text so um, behind the times does it a disservice when you could say the words as written and, and feel some power in that. Without having seen it, my take on it is maybe it suffers from the same thing this recent Camelot revival suffered from and the production of Oliver I saw a couple years ago suffered from as well, which is you can only be so interesting when tethered to a text. Maybe 1776 isn't good, actually? Because here's the thing, we've all seen these Michael Arden revivals and we're like, ah, it's not hard to take an old show or an existing show and just layer on a new reading of it and it all just works and it makes all these new connections in your mind and that's such a neat idea when it works. But sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes a good concept over an old idea is fine, but over an old script isn't. Maybe you should just write a new play about the Founding Fathers at cast as women. Maybe you should just write a new musical about Camelot. Maybe you should just do a new adaptation of the Oliver Twist story set in 2020 Orlando, as opposed to just counting on costume and set designs to really 
make this work. So here's where I'm at. I want a version of 1776 that I like. I would love it to be this version. All female or at least non-male identifying cast, lots of diverse voices, lots of interesting movement stylistic choices. I want it to be really good, and some people assure me that it is. I've seen lots of reviews, lots of YouTube comments, lots of forum posts that say they really felt seen and really thought that this show said something cool. But there's also lots of folks who said it was too much, and I just don't know who to believe. I'll be honest, I am a little bit surprised that it wasn't nominated for anything, because even if it doesn't work, it it was it tried stuff right the costuming was kind of neat the lighting design from what i've seen pretty cool the set was, it was just a set that was fine but like some of the performances really good it had a, a strong cast it had an interesting enough directorial vision that i i kind of expected it to get a nomination and and i don't know how conspiracy theorists to get that it didn't get any like is it because straight white men run the American theater wing? I don't know. And I think that's the tricky part of this. I think, and I can say this as a straight white man myself, it feels dangerous to not like this show. Specifically with the critique of it is too woke or whatever. Maybe, maybe it just wasn't for those people who were reviewing it. Maybe, maybe they're missing something. And maybe I would miss something if I saw it. But I want to see it. I want to know. All I can tell you is it was not nominated for any Tony Awards. But it did open this season. Our next musical up for discussion is K-pop. This show tells the story about three individual K-pop groups battling it out, coming together for a one-night concert that will determine the fate of all of their careers. The show started out as an immersive piece and was brought to Broadway in fall of 2022. Unfortunately, it didn't go great. Audiences did not respond well, and after a particularly scathing and racist review in the New York Times, K-pop was kind of doomed from there. Everyone who saw the show had an absolutely phenomenal time and had great things to say about the choreography, the music, the vibes, but ultimately vibes were not enough. The show did not run for a very long time on Broadway and it is amazing that it got three nominations because people weren't expecting it to get very much at all. It did not have a long run on Broadway, but I'm so glad that it got some nominations this year and I'm glad that even if its time on Broadway was cut short, it still can live on hopefully through some wins. K-pop got three nominations this year for Music and Lyrics by Helen Park and Matt Vernon, Clint Ramos and Sophia Choi, Best Costume Design of a Musical for Clint Ramos and Sophia Choi, and Best Choreography for Jennifer Weber. In terms of what it will win, Music and Lyrics category is pretty stacked this year. We've got a lot of really great original work by some more traditionally known and celebrated composers. I'm not saying that Helen Park and Max Vernon shouldn't win. I'm saying that it'll be a tough sell to a demographic of Tony voters that is not traditionally the K-pop demographic. In terms of, and for best choreography, it's kind of the same way. The choreography of this show was absolutely stunning, but there are a lot of Broadway legends who are choreographing this year in a very traditional Broadway style. Same song, different verse, right? I think it's great to celebrate new kinds of choreography and new choreographers. I would love to see Jennifer Weber take this home. I just find it unlikely. The award that I think K-pop has the best chance of winning is best costume design of a musical. The nominees this year are fine. Nothing like really jumps out at me except for K-pop. Costumes do a great job of marking the arc of each performance group as they make their way through the show. I think the costumes for this show are great and to my mind, they're the clear winner. And that's it for K-pop. It kind of drew the short stick this year in terms of its experience and time on Broadway, but I'm so glad that it's being recognized at awards this season despite having closed so long ago. And I hope that this gives it enough PR to maybe have a life outside of Broadway. Maybe it'll tour, maybe it'll take to the regional theaters. I don't know, but I hope it does. Another musical that was completely snubbed this year was Neil Diamond's A Beautiful Noise. The show itself is Neil Diamond's story as told through his music. The framing device is an aged Neil Diamond who's told that he can no longer perform 
kind of unpacks his emotional baggage with a therapist who has like a book of his musics and like is like, where were you at about this song? And he like tells you where he was, what it meant to him, all that kind of stuff, which is like a fun idea. Listen, if you love Neil Diamond, you'll love this show. If you feel mid to apathetic about Neil Diamond, this show will not do a good job of making you care about him as a person. Maybe there's a show out there that can do that and this just wasn't it, or maybe he's just a pretty, eh, kind of guy. I don't know. That being said, I kind of wish the show got something. Like, I know there's not like an ensemble Tony, which is a bummer, but if there were, the show should be nominated for that. Robin Herder as Neil's first wife? First wife. As Neil's first wife is great. She should have gotten a nom. Yeah, so I guess in the world that we live in, it should have gotten at least one nomination and it didn't, which is, you know, whatever. Maybe orchestrations. I feel like jukebox musicals generally have pretty good orchestrations. I don't know. I don't know. The show was fine. If you're over the age of 60, you'll probably love it. If you're under the age of 30, it probably won't mean much to you. Almost Famous is based off of the movie of the same name, which came out in the year 2000. It follows the adventures of William Miller, a 17-year-old... It was 16-year-old. Okay, 15-year-old boy who becomes a rock journalist following the band Stillwater across the country as they go on tour and learns all about life and love and rock and roll. The show was a flop. It did not do well. It closed after a couple of months, 77 performances, but it was still nominated for Best Score Written for the Theater for Tom Kitt and Cameron Crowe. I'll be honest, when the show was coming out, I wasn't very interested. It was based off of a movie, which is usually not my favorite origin story for a Broadway musical. And I honestly thought it was a jukebox musical. It has a couple of classic rock songs that they covered in the movie that are included here. And that's what they were putting in their promotional material and performing on The Tonight Show and everything. So I thought that's all that there was. I had no idea Tom Kitt had written original music for the show, and some of it's not bad. I don't think it'll win up against the other shows like Shucked and Some Like It Hot and Kimberly Akimbo, but I like a lot of the music. I think it's pretty okay. I think the show itself, while not amazing, very well could have a, a life in the regional theater circuit. Um, and the one thing I do have to say about the show, it stars Casey Likes, which is a Jimmy Award kid, and I love them. I felt bad that his Broadway debut was cut so short, but he's already booked Marty McFly in Back to the Future on Broadway, so the kid's gonna be fine. Our final snub musical to talk about this season is Bob Fosse's Dancin'. This show received a criminal zero nominations. Bob Fosse's Dancin', which was revived this year in 2023, is a complete reconstruction and remounting of the original Bob Fosse's Dancin', which premiered on Broadway in the 1970s. Now, although the show feels like a revival, because it is technically a remounting, that means that a lot of the awards it should have been nominated for, it wasn't eligible for, including Best Revival and Best Choreography, which kind of sucks for them. Despite it being a reconstruction, the show felt fresh. It's a dance musical review of sorts, so there's some original music, but a lot of it is just Fosse's classic choreography with a lot of classic American tunes. Although the show is not eligible for choreography, I wish that some of these dancers had been nominated. They are triple threats in the truest form. Amazing vocals, phenomenal acting, and I don't think I need to say how great the dancing is. The costumes also were absolutely stunning and I think deserved at least a nomination, if not a win. But so it goes, dancing had to close after 10 weeks on Broadway, which is a shame. Dancing.